I've got so many automations I needed to find a solution. I've been running Home Assistant for a couple of years and as like you, you've probably got hundreds of automations sitting there. So I've recently discovered a feature called Trigger ID and I've started to use that in my automations. That's allowed me to reduce my automations by about 50%. If you'd like to see how I've done this, then hang around and watch the video. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone, welcome to Project Smart Home, my name's Paul. In this video, I'm going to show you how I've simplified a couple of automations in my environment. So the first one I've got in the utility room, there's two existing automations there, one to turn the light on and then one to turn the light off again. And I've consolidated that into one automation, one simple automation using Trigger ID. The second one is more complex and it's in my son's bedroom. And I'm consolidating three automations down to one single automation. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to see how I've used the trigger ID to massively simplify what I'm doing with my automations. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the video. What I'll do here then is give you a quick overview of the utility room lights that I've got. So I've got two automations at the moment, uh, one to switch the lights on and one to switch the lights off. So for the light switching on, I've got the motion detector detecting motion and then illumination is below 50% and then assuming the lights are off, then the lights will be turned on. So that's a fairly straightforward automation. And then the second part of that is to turn them off, again using the same motion sensor, which I think is a, a hue motion sensor, inactivity or no motion for two minutes, and then the lights will be turned off, assuming that they're on already. So what we'll do now is we'll create a brand new automation, a single automation that covers both switching on and switching off of the utility room lights. So the first thing I want to do is set up a trigger and the trigger will be the motion sensor that's in the utility. So when the, when the motion sensor detects motion, then it will trigger. And what I'm going to do here, which is different to the previous one, is add a trigger ID that can be used later on in the automation. So what you need to do is give the trigger ID a unique name so what I'm doing here is just um, calling it utility room motion detected and we can use that later on in the action part of this automation so I'm adding the second trigger now so this will be to turn the lights off so again, using the motion sensor to detect when motion is stop being detected for two minutes, then an action will occur. So again, we need to have a trigger ID. <clears throat> now use something very similar. So utility room, stop detecting motion. So we've now got two triggers, one to detect when the motion is detected and the second trigger to detect when um, motion is stopped. So now from an actions point of view, what we do is use the choose option, choose action or routine. So we can have two options. So the first option will be to um, switch the lights on using the trigger ID from the motion detection and the second option will be switching the lights off based on motion stop being detected and the trigger ID associated with that. So we want the lights to come on in the utility room based on a trigger ID 
that we created earlier in the trigger. So we'll tick the appropriate box, the appropriate trigger, and then that completes that action. Now to create the second option, which is to switch the lights off. So again, it's triggered by the trigger that we created earlier. So when the motion stop, motion sensor stops detecting motion for a period of time, which I think we set for two minutes, then the lights will be switched off. So we've now got two options, one to switch the lights on and one to switch the lights off, which is purely based on those two triggers. Before we go any further, I'm gonna give the automation a name so I don't lose it. What I tend to do is start the name with the room that the automation is associated with then I just find it, it's easier to find in my list of automations. What we also want to do as part of this automation is add a, a light sensor, so, so the amount of illumination that's in the room. So we can add a condition to option one of the action list to say that this action should only be triggered when there's a certain amount of light in the room. So what we can do is add the device so the motion sensor that's in the utility room will be detecting the luminance if it's below 50 then the action will be triggered based on the motion. And then that completes all of the capability from those previous two automations into one single automation. Now that's set up, you can either go in and delete your old automations or disable them until you've tested the new one properly but um, yeah, the old ones are no longer required, so you can do what you want with them. Now we've got the concept of it, what we'll do is I'll do a more complex automation. So in my son's bedroom, I've got three different automations that control the lights, depending on whether it's at school, whether it's the weekend, whether it's at home or not. So in this first one, um, we've got obviously motion being detected by the motion sensor and then there's various optional conditional things going on. So if it's first thing in the morning, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there's also an option to turn the automation on or off, detecting how bright it is in the room, whether the light's on or off already. And then the bottom um, condition is if he's at school or not. So if it's the school holidays, then we can turn this automation off so it doesn't work him up early in the morning, the lights coming on. The second one is an everyday routine. So we want the lights to come on between 9 a.m. and 8 p.m. every day. That can be overwritten, overridden by that automation being switched on or off. So you can, do, you can switch that automation on or off in the interface and then the lights are coming on 50 percent and then the final part is obviously um, when there's no motion detected in my son's room for five minutes then the lights will be turned off but again that can be overridden by that automation on off toggle switch that I've covered in previous videos, but I have that available in the dashboard, so you can easily turn it on or off. 
So now I'll take you through the creation of the new single automation to replace these three automations. So I've split the screen so we can see the existing automation and the new one. So what I'm gonna do is start by adding the first trigger for the first option. So this is in my son's bedroom, so it's using his motion sensor to detect motion. So once motion is detected, this trigger will trigger. So I'm adding, like previously, I'm adding a trigger ID so we can use that trigger ID later on in the automation. So we've added the first trigger ID uh, for the early morning trigger of the lights to come on. So we'll now create the associated action, again using the choose option, so we can have multiple options depending on which trigger ID is activated. So we see, you can see there, we've triggered, if it's triggered early morning, trigger ID, then we will carry out the action of switching the lights on. So we're gonna use the call service option. So I'm calling my light wave light switch to turn on the lights. And we just check that we've got all the parameters across. So in this one, I'm setting the brightness to 50%. There's quite a lot of spotlights in that room. So 50% is perfectly sufficient to light the whole room. So that's it, the, that part of the automation is replicated. So I'm now looking at adding the conditions. So there'll be conditions in this list that will be relevant for the whole automation and some conditions that are just relevant for the individual action. So as I go through this, then some of the conditions will be applied at the action level, some will be applied at the overall automation level. So as I've said before, I've got a trigger, uh, sorry, a, a toggle switch in the bedroom dashboard. So if for whatever reason, my son wants to switch off all of the automations, he can toggle that switch and none of the automations will work in that room, which is quite a handy feature to have. Then the next automation is around the brightness in the room. So I don't want the brightness, sorry, I don't want the lights to trigger if the room's nice and bright. So that is a specific option for that part of the overall automation. So I'm applying that condition to option one of the automation. So the next one, again, with within option one of the automation, there's no point running the automation if the lights are on already. So we're just doing a check there to make sure the lights are off before we try turning them back on again. So again, that is specific to option one of the overall automation. And then this um, part of the automation is specific to um, when the kids are on or off school. So again, I don't want the lights coming on early in the morning if it's the weekend or if the kids are off school, the lights will only trigger if it's later in the morning. So if that automation, if that toggle switch is disabled, then this part of the automation wouldn't work and vice versa. If it was on, then it would work. It would, would allow this part of the routine, this automation to run. So I only want this automation to run at particular times of the day. 
So this is the early morning routine. So if it's between 7.30 in the morning and 9 a.m., then this automation will run. I also only want it to run on weekdays, so Monday through to Friday. What I'm gonna do before I go any further is just save the automation so I don't lose everything. So again, what I like to do is name the automation I'll start the, the name of the automation with the room that it's in so it's easier to search on and then give a description of what the automation does. So in this case, we're switching the lights and on and off based on time of day. So you notice I've got uh, an error message at the top there. What I've forgotten to do in the trigger is switch it to detecting motion. I've left it on the default option, so that should now save properly, which it does. We'll now look at the next part of the automation, which is the part that turns the lights on every day. So the first thing we'll do is add the device motion sensor that's in the room as a second part of the automation. And then like we did the first time around, we need to give the this part of the automation or this trigger a trigger ID, a unique trigger ID. So what I'm gonna do is just copy the trigger ID from the first one and just change it slightly just to make it unique. So it's obviously when the motion sensor starts to detect motion then this will trigger as well. And I'll cover in a minute the fact that because I've got two triggers doing pretty much the same thing you need to change the automation so uh, it can run in parallel and execute correctly. So from an actions point of view, we need to obviously add a second action to pick up this new trigger ID. So when the lights are triggered based on the everyday part of the automation, then we want the lights to come on. But as you can see on the left hand side of the screen, there are some conditions that we need to adhere to to make sure this correct part of the automation triggers. So the automation is going to run every day of the week and it's going to run between 9 a.m. and 8 p.m. So outside of that, uh, if there isn't another automation, then the lights will be turned on and off manually. So we only want the lights to come on when there's a particular level of brightness in the room. So when the luminance is at the the correct level, then the automation will be triggered. And I'm just going through replicating those conditions from the original automation and adding them to this new section of the new automation. So obviously want the, there's no point running the automation if the lights are are already on so we need to make sure that they're off before this runs and then the final part of it is to actually switch the lights on and I'm using call service and then that call service is turning the lights on and in this room I've got um, a dimmer switch made by Lightwave so that's configured in the background and then we'll set the brightness to 50%. There's six spotlights in the room, so they don't need to be on at 100%. The 
so that's option that's that's option two fully configured in the new automation so the next part now is to go through and create the automation to switch the lights off and then we've covered the three elements or the three different uh, three different options of the automation so going into the third part then which is to turn the lights off again we're using the motion sensor that's in my son's bedroom and when that motion center motion sensor stops detecting motion for five minutes the appropriate action will be triggered so this is the third option in the automation and we're, run, we're calling the service again and this time it will be turn off lights and again it's turning off that dimmer switch if there's no motion that's been detected So I need to add the unique trigger ID for this third option within this automation. So again, I'm just using the trigger ID from the previous section and just updating it slightly to give it a unique name. Once that's in place, then I can use that trigger ID within the action to make sure it's picking up the right execution. So going back into option three, which is turning off the lights, adding the condition, which is triggered by the motion sensor stopping detecting motion for five minutes. That then completes the replication of that automation and at that point you can then disable or delete depending on how brave you are those old automations that should no longer be required i disabled mine for a period of time just to make sure everything was working but i'm now a couple of weeks later on and it's it's working fine just to complete this off then, um, by default, the automations seem to be set in single threaded processing mode. So I've changed this automation to run in parallel because what I'd found initially was that um, it wouldn't execute based on the fact that it was trying to look at those first two options uh, and wouldn't execute. So now I've changed that to parallel. Everything seems to work fine. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching it until the end. If you've got any comments or feedback, I'd love to hear them. Um, I wish I'd discovered the trigger ID um, way before I did now. It saved me a lot of time and effort uh, having to go back through all my automations again. But it's a, it's a great feature. Um, hope you make use of it. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks, bye.